What's up guys, Cali Q here, and yes man, you see the title of today's video. I wanted to check in with my JRPG community and my JRPG family. What is the best JRPG of 2024 so far? What is the JRPG that has made you feel the most nostalgic, the most at home, and honestly the most satisfied this year so far in 2024? Now we are at the midpoint of this year, so I figured this would be a great time to take a little break from all the release action and to go over what we have been through thus far. In this video, I will also explain my personal favorite JRPG experience in 2024 thus far, but I made a poll asking you guys the same question to which I received a ton of votes and we're going to go over some of those results in today's video. I'm so curious to hear which has been your favorite JRPG experience thus far. So without any more delay, please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy JRPG content like this and let's jump into the games that have released so far. Now we'll go over the major titles. If I miss a title, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm not perfect and honestly I can't keep up with all of these JRPGs, but I will make sure I hit the major ones and give my brief thoughts on those as well. So I want to start off with Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Now this was a game I was very, very excited for coming into the new year of 2024. And I have to say, after playing it on my PS4 for a while, playing with some friends online and getting through the campaign slash story mode, I really ended up enjoying Grand Blue. Now I may have overestimated it just a little bit um, in my anticipation for it. Because the battle system was okay, but it wasn't as deep as I wanted it to be. And the story left a couple of things to be desired because you're just kind of thrown into the mist of these characters' story as if you've missed the whole entire first half of the game. But maybe that's due to me not really understanding and knowing the Grand Blue Fantasy characters and lore. So the game was fine. The game was fine. I, I would give it honestly like an 8 out of 10. I did have a full review. I just never... Uh, fine-tuned it and finished it but for those of you who were wondering about my grand blue experience i really did enjoy this game while it didn't quite live up to the lofty expectations i had for it this was a very respectable jrpg release and i hope to see them try their hand at more rpg type games like this i hope this is not the last time we see this studio go for a game like this but grand blue fantasy has definitely been one of my favorite experiences when it comes to jrpgs in 2024 thus far. Now I'm going to change the direction of this video just a little bit. I actually have not played Final Fantasy VII Rebirth However, it is in my sights, it is in my catalog, and I cannot wait to finally actually start and play this game for myself. I wanted to get myself used to the Final Fantasy format, so I took you guys' advice and I went back and played me some Final Fantasy VI in order to start getting ready to appreciate the new direction that Final Fantasy has been going in. So this game is on my radar and i will have a proper and profound review coming for you guys at some point but i so far i was impressed by what final fantasy 7 rebirth was going for even if it didn't quite hit expectations or meet sales requirements or whatever the case may be this is still a phenomenal looking game and i hope that final fantasy fans got what they were looking for Final Fantasy fans, please be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. What did you think of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Was it everything you wanted or was it a disappointment? Now, I'm a huge Yakuza fan, but for some reason, I had a hard time getting into Like a Dragon. So unfortunately, it really wasn't for me. And perhaps later on down the line, I will revisit and retry to give these games another try. But maybe it's just me being too old school and I cannot get out of my old ways and my old habits. But Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth wasn't for me. And um, I'm okay with that. Sometimes we'll play things that we might not all agree on but this series is just not for me in its current state and i much prefer it as a battle beat em up brawler but i will appreciate all of the new things that infinite wealth brought to the table and you know what maybe someday i will have a change of heart but yeah this game for me wasn't exactly it but kudos to those who absolutely love this game it's classic yakuza fever and you know what Welcome to the family because I've been here as a Yakuza fan for a very, very long time. 
And yes, I'm about to throw a curveball up in here because I love Grandia 2. And the Grandia 1 and 2 HD releases came out for PlayStation 4 and 5 this year. So yes, I'm throwing it up in here in this list because this is my favorite JRPG of all time. And I will use any and every excuse to introduce this game to my viewers, subscribers, and my potential new audience. You must play this game. Grandia 2 specifically is my favorite JRPG of all time. It's a quite phenomenal game, one of the best battle systems I've ever seen, and I promise you characters that you will not forget, characters that you will love and enjoy. This is classic Dreamcast JRPG goodness right in front of your face in 2024, and if you haven't had a chance to play it, it is available on Switch, and the HD collection also came out for Sony and Xbox earlier this year. I'm using this video once again to bring more awareness to this amazing classic legendary JRPG Grandia 2. Do yourself a favor and go play one of the best JRPGs you've ever played. This was definitely a welcome surprise for me in 2024 as it showed me that the Grandia series was still alive and potentially there could be some hope if we make enough noise but that's what I'm doing with this video so yeah another shameless Grandia 2 plug but I don't care. And it is without a doubt, so far you guys know which JRPG that I have enjoyed the most thus far, and that is a Yuden Chronicle 100 Heroes, the spiritual successor of the Suikoden series. Now this game is not without its flaws. This game actually has a lot of things that it can improve upon, but I'm not saying it's my favorite experience because of how flawless or perfect it is. But this is the game that brought me closest to that nostalgia that I had as a kid and as a teen when playing JRPGs. This game in 2024 actually managed to bring me back to a time where I just blocked out everything in my life and focused on the adventure and the journey that I was having. Once again, this game does a lot of things right and it does a lot of things wrong. It does a lot of things that are still stuck in its um, ways and it's a little stubborn to get with the times, but that is also part of the charm. I haven't had such a fun experience with a JRPG like I had had with a Yudin Chronicle in quite some time. Maybe Star Ocean the Second Story R brought me the closest, but this game right here, man, warts and all. The way that Yoshitaka Muriyama made this game for us, it was a callback to those simpler times of JRPGs, and thus far, a Yuden Chronicle from its plethora of recruitable characters, from its charming characters, from its charming side quests and mini games and things of that nature, I really enjoyed this game, man. And again, some of you are going to think I'm crazy for this being my favorite experience of 2024 thus far, but that is okay. That's why JRPG is such an amazing medium because we're all all gonna have our own different opinions and different games that mean a lot to us so yeah for right now man a Yuden Chronicle 100 Heroes is definitely my favorite JRPG of 2024 thus far and again this video you can use to place your own favorite experience of 2024 thus far but keep a Yuden Chronicle in mind because at the end of this video I will be going over the results of the poll that I did you know what let's jump into that poll right now so four weeks ago, I asked you guys, what is your favorite JRPG of 2024 thus far? And here were the results out of the options that I asked you guys. The Yuden Chronicle, Grand Blue, Final Fantasy, and Like a Dragon Infinite Well. Surprisingly, Euden Chronicle is topping out the list with 56%. Now, I don't know if that's just a little bit biased because my channel has a lot of sweet good in Euden Chronicle fans on it, but I found that quite interesting that over 1.4k votes, Euden Chronicle is at the top. Maybe a little bit of recency biasness in there, however the case may be. That's why maybe it's not too far-fetched that Euden Chronicle is my favorite experience of the year thus far. Once again, shout out to Unicorn Overlord and Persona 3 Reload. I didn't give those games a clip in my video, but people love those games as well. As you can see from the comment here, voting for Unicorn Overlord. JRPGs have been on fire this year, and 2024, already through the halfway point, has been one of the best years and resurgences for the JRPG genre. This is my personal ranking of them thus far, and again, at the end of the year, we'll look at everything in totality. But y'all let me know down in the comment section below, do you agree with the video, disagree with the video? What is your favorite experience thus far, and do you think this year is shaping up to be one of the best JRPG years? 
Thank you all for the support. It means a ton to me. We will continue to grow. If you enjoyed this video, consider helping us get to 4,000 subscribers. That is the next milestone we are working on. God bless each and every one of you guys. Thank you for giving my channel a chance. It means a ton to me. I'll see you guys at the top. Peace. Thank you.